Estimating 30 minutes yeah. more to work around the rim. I would say we probably do better to go up to with those boulders there. Document that. You have the turnaround point. It's going to take longer than I expected. Our positions are all in doubt now, uh, Bruno. What we were looking at was a flank, but it, it wasn't really uh, the top of it, wasn't the rim of coal. We got a way to go yet. Okay, Ed, then. Uh, well, uh, Perhaps you can think uh, with us if you want. I'd say uh, that the rim is uh, at least uh, 30 minutes away. Uh, we're approaching the edge of the boulder field here from the south of the flight. And what I'm proposing is perhaps we use that as a turnaround point. It seems to me that we spend an awful lot of time in traverse if we don't, and we don't get very many samples. And uh, just a couple of questions I have up now. Uh, I'd like uh, your notes if you do uh, see any dust, uh, particularly on the top surfaces of boulders in the, uh, in the area. And uh, any comparisons uh, between the uh, boulders you see distributed around, are they all the same or do uh, some types appear different? It's really the very close to our I think, uh, Fred, uh, if you'll uh, keep those questions in mind, the best thing for us to do is to get up here and document the uh, sample. What I feel is pretty sure is the cone ejecta. And then uh, when we head down the sun, we'll be able to see these subtle variations in rock types a lot better than we are right now. Uh, Roger out. What has happened here is that Shepard and Mitchell are making their way up the slopes of rim, uh, up the rim toward Cone Crater, have been deceived by the sunlight and shadow as to their actual position, which is now somewhat in doubt. They at first thought they were up here, very near the rim, approaching this boulder field. They apparently are somewhere in this area now, and it's a hard, steep incline. Shepard estimating at one point an 18 degree slope, now saying it may be steeper and estimating that it'll take him 30 minutes more, take he and Mitchell 30 minutes more to make their way to the edge of the rim and then turn around. They're in this area, they've been ordered to rest after their heart rates began to rise and their breathing went out. Okay, Ed, put 
Shepard and Mitchell now in the throes of an agonizing decision, having fallen behind on the timeline with the going tougher than they thought. Can they reach the rim of cone, which Mitchell wants to do, and look down into the emptiness of that crater and throw boulders down? Or should they settle for this and work their way back? and doctors in the back room thinking it may be too much to continue on, take too long. Wanting them to stop here. Okay, that uh, decision, I guess, was based on Al's uh, estimate of another at least uh, 30 minutes. And, uh, of course, we, uh, we cannot see that uh, from here. It's uh, kind of your judgment on that. quarters of the way to Cone Crater will stand by. Yes. Shepard and Mitchell. Why don't we lose our bed, Al, and leave the mess and get on up there. Mitchell saying abandon the mess. Yeah. Uh, I think what we're looking at right here in this boulder field is uh, that was ejected from Cone. Neil Armstrong, the first man to walk on the moon. We'll ask him to watch and listen and comment with us here over our relief map. Neil, how are you this morning? Fine, Jules. Uh, certainly enjoying this activity. Sounds like Al and Ed are having a ball while working hard. Yes, uh, I can believe they're really, uh, really enthusiastic about the challenge of getting up to the top of that hill. I know I'd be faced with the same kind of a difficult decision in uh, trying to balance between uh, doing a very good job on what they know they can do or trying for the rim and uh, hoping that there would really be some uh, answers up there. That sounds like a really rugged piece of terrain up here, uh, a lot rougher than the Sea of Tranquility. Yes, it certainly does, and uh, I can believe uh, from the sound of their voices that uh, those are pretty steep slopes, and uh, they, 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 uh, they're getting a good workout. I was a little surprised to find Shepard more conservative than Ed here. Ed wanting to press on, Shepard saying, well, maybe, maybe we better not. I, I guess the responsibility is a command. play a little game here of cranking in the best of the air to ground and talking in between if you can work with us. That'll be fine. Okay, I'll go to medium slow. And I'll take a pass from here.
sounds like they must be up in this area here somewhere. Yes, apparently they're uh, high enough that they can see the entire panorama now, and I suspect they can look back and see the limb and the, some of the scientific experiments from that distance. Uh, the uh, rugged boulder field to the west rim. Uh, it appears as though the best for us to do will be to go to the west rim. Documented from there, even though the uh, planning may not be quite as good. Uh, we're pushing on that direction. Uh, Roger, Al, you're open to the west rim. This is beginning to sound like a good argument for a lunar roving vehicle, Neil. Al, back to info. Yes, uh, Certainly, uh, that would be a, a good use. Uh, it sounds as if the uh, terrain is quite rugged, though. They talk it, uh, Ed talked about it being very hilly and uh, no ski spots, uh, quite large rocks. And, uh, of course, that might be a good challenge for a uh, rover, too. Uh, it may not uh, be able to negotiate this stiff terrain. Right. And they're deciding not to abandon the MET. They need the tools for sampling. Just a question of time. We'll get there. Uh, right now. And time is what Capcom, Fred Hayes, and Mission Control is concerned about. Will they have enough to get the MET up there, get the pictures, and do the rest of the work? The of time here becomes the fact that they've still got a mile after this to get back to the limb and then Ground perhaps 45 and minutes more to work with ALSIP. Neil, have you been able to get a handle on what the problem is with the, the ALSIP station? Uh, no, I don't have uh, any additional information on that, Jules. But it's going to take, uh, that's 600 feet or so each way from the Antares. It's going to take them another 45 minutes to get there and back and adjust it, won't it? Uh, I. I just know that they uh, they would like to uh, adjust that antenna, and uh, beyond that, uh, I'm not certain. This uh, reminds me of uh, the last, last phase of our uh, extravehicular activity on R11. A matter of doing everything you could in the, in the minutes that were left. Right. This sounds like they're really pushing hard up a steep slope and breathing very hard, Neil. Yes, any time you breathe hard, you trigger that uh, transmitter every, every time you breathe and hear every breath, and it really accentuates uh, the situation. Good point. It's a voice uh, and breath-actuated uh, mi microphone. Right. Neil, we have uh, Frank Borman here in our studios in New York, too. I think he might like to chat with you a bit. Hi, yeah. Neil. Hello, Frank. Good to hear you. One of the things that occurred to me, was, even though we see their heart rates uh, quite high at times and uh, they're obviously working very hard, I've only on two occasions heard them mention going uh, out of minimum cooling on these uh, uh, PLSSs. It must be a very efficient uh, heat transfer unit. Yes, uh, it's an exceptionally good, uh, good unit. I found uh, that I could stay at minimum all the time and only had to go to uh, the medium flow position when I was running across the surface or pulling uh, heavy loads, lift, uh, lifting equipment back into the lunar mountain. I, I think that it would be uh, almost impossible for a, a human being to exert this kind of effort on, uh, on the Earth, too, don't you, Neil? Yes, uh, 
the, the moon was a great friend in that regard. I guess we couldn't, uh, couldn't tackle it if it had the Earth's gravity level, and uh, it's something we'll have to think about when we start tackling the planets. I, uh, I hate to think of five hours in a hard suit uh, in the practice exercise. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> about another hour in the lights of these studios, and you'll both find out what that work looks like. <laughs> They're working on the rim. On the rim of cone, let's listen into the air to ground.